negative connotation there. Well, I don't, don't think don't that really Doom know, has cake is a negative. Best part. <laughs> oh, Doom Cake. Well, but, if her name was Doom Cake. But it's Maria. We we'll just call fine. it Doom. I would just call her Maria. It's fine. I think you can call yourself Nicholas. Nicholas. You I've, never, like that. I've never heard that one before. Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying your name I every think... time. This gallon of milk, Grandma. <laughs> it would be like, ask Alan. Or it's no, like you're it always goes, like, all right. Nicholas. So, yeah. No, it was... Ask him. That's it. <laughs> and it's modeled after the guy, and I love you, man. <laughs> Give it all you got. <laughs> oh my god, the freaking DVDs that I just got. I've been doing this workout plan thing. It's like, oh, I, I laugh every single time, but she's always like, give me what you She says exactly that. She's like, give me what you get. I'm just like, oh god. <laughs> you can't keep saying that. You know, as I feel as underwatched as role models. Mm. Yeah. It's a good one. We I recently like watched role models a couple months ago when I went to visit her brother, and he only had a couple, like, yeah, handful yeah, of DVDs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm always down for anything David Wayne. I, yeah. I celebrate the guy's entire catalog. <laughs> yeah. We're recording right now, by the way. Really you just ruined it. You I ruined really, the organicness. I really it. snuck it in there on you. No, you ruined it. You ruined it. I didn't ru- How did I ruin it? She immediately clammed up. She's like, nope, done. Well, that's not the first thing he's ever snuck up on me. <laughs> and and she did, in fact, up. clam up then, too. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, Nicholas. <laughs> so that's it. So the name's Maria. <laughs> we'll just call her something different every time. I'm like Mstek. I like that. Mstek. Yeah. Cool. I'm. Uh, I don't know. I'll think of it later. Don't fight it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> Dickless. <laughs> so I tried to tell Emily. Well, I was telling Emily that iZombie got good and that I was really liking it again. And she was just like, I don't even like listening to it. It annoys me. <laughs> it's because Why? it's the same voiceover. Because it's as the same Veronica character. Mars. Oh, Veronica. I, I can see that. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I liked Veronica. I love Veronica Mars, but it's like, mm-hmm. I can't handle Get out of it. I'm like, even the creator, like, aren't you annoyed at the voiceover? Like, aren't you over it? Yeah. Like, it's so much voiceover. I can see that. And oh. just listening to her voice, I think she also does annoy me. She's okay. Personally. She's all right. I don't find her to be annoying. I well, mean, she's I'm not no Kristen Bell. The scene either. I'm literally yeah. just hearing it. I think the dude from Alias, his name is he's what really David. Good. Um, I don't know. It's I probably he's not like... even David, and we're just gonna post this. Yeah, that guy. But we'll just call him Alias, dude. He is fucking awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. He should be like way more famous. He's. I agree, dude. And he strong character actor for sure. Really yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's yeah, what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He played really he played Sark and Alias, and he kept like popping in and out right. of the story to make uh, Sydney's life miserable. I like him. Um, yeah, he's really work. strong. Yeah, and now. Just because his hair is really platinum. Like, oh, we need we need some more platinum blonde <laughs> people. Uh, yeah, really, he's a zombie, right? Yeah, <laughs> so he has platinum blonde hair. Well, she uh, her hair is darker. She this wears a wig. I understand. So her mom, though, I did walk in while you were watching it over the weekend. It's like yes. her mom still doesn't know she's a zombie. Okay, her mom does not know. Yeah. We have watched up to episode one of season two. Uh, her mom and her brother do not. Her brother got into a big explosion. He was near death, and she was the only one that had his blood type, and she refused to give it mm-hmm. because she didn't want to tell them about the zombie shit. And now her family's like, "You gotta get out of here! Like we don't like you, and you don't. You wanted to let him die." And then, yeah, yeah. You're pretty pissed. So she keeps trying <laughs> to like reconcile with her family. They want. They're like, well, I think you each need to don't preface so. that with. Like, why, like, because you think zombie, you're like, you should be able to tell by looking at someone they're a fucking zombie. Because I, I think people have a hard time on the show, too, by the definition of zombie. Yeah. Like, it's whatever framework, like, whatever zombie universe you're within. Yeah. Exactly. You know? So it's like, it's not like a Day of the Dead, Night of Living Dead kind of zombie. It's just like, you're not really, like, rotting and, like, de- right. like dumb. Yeah, you just... It's kind of almost like it's almost like a zombie vampire in the terms of was, like you yeah. need brains like they need like they need blood like. but they're still living life and like out there yeah and in a similar they have a heartbeat but they need to sustain their 
carcass. Which but... I totally respect. Uh, I totally <laughs> respect him. shows and movies that like, all right, yeah, we're gonna do zombies, but we're gonna do it in our own way. Like yeah. Horror Story right now is doing that with Hotel, and it's like, yeah, they're technically vampires, but they're not really throwing the V word around mm-hmm. all the time. And like, yes, they drink blood and they need it to live, yeah. but they're they, like rewriting their own rules. Yeah, for like it. You, as long as you have your own set of rules and you stick to it, like so there's consistency. Like, yeah, that works. Right, it's not like Lost, where there really wasn't any consistency. In <laughs> now, the end one the dude who does know that Liv is a zombie is Major, the guy that she broke her engagement with. Mm-hmm. He now knows. He became. Oh, so okay. He did it in the beginning. He, he was like, "Why did we break up? Like, I don't understand. Like, right. what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what's going on?" And her best friend thought it was like drugs or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they all kind of like said that from some something. Something must have happened. But then Major kept looking for these two kids that like were missing and he got all wrapped up in the zombie shit and then he died and then she made him a zombie but then she gave him the cure so now he's cured and the alias guy is cured and now she ran out of cure mm-hmm. the cure cured? is no, no she's, she's not. not she gave it up she yeah. had two doses she gave one to major and one to the bad guy because mm-hmm. she thought the bad guy keeps feeding the zombies and um yeah this is a big season one spoiler alert podcast apparently <laughs> skip right to two people <laughs> Go right to season two. What was that scene I came in where he, someone was running with a brain and they tried to get the cop to... Um... Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he found and a he brain in one of the zombies' cars. He's like, see, they're up to shitty shit. Like, yeah, what the like, fuck? Oh, there's yeah. a brain, there's a human but brain. But I love how the cop like pulls this guy over and he's like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll go along with what you're saying. What's in your... Mm-hmm. What's in there? And he opens it up and it's a fucking brain. Yeah. And he's just like... It's from my deli. Like, I have a card. It just says, like, meats on it. And well, it's like, like, it's like, oh, well, then like, yeah. you're fine then because yeah. you have a card. It's like any psycho <laughs> can make a card that says meats. But then what kind of police officer wants to make this whole huge thing, take it back to the precinct, and they're like, this is a cow brain, man. Like, what's your deal? <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to go forward <laughs> with like, this. You think so. there's zombies out here? People are getting I real brains. Your card. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the address doesn't even exist, and he knows the entire town. <laughs> like, he's just like... All right, go with your cavalry. Yo, it's like that Be book. Gone. Was it? I don't know if it was the book How to Survive a Horror Movie or if it was the book You Let Me Borrow, but it's like steps to take when trying to convince an officer of the law that like crazy <laughs> horror shit is happening. Yeah. Like, there were rules to it too. Like you can't like fucking freak yeah, out. Yeah, you can't be losing your mind. You can't be losing your mind. They're gonna be like, whoa, 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 and just like shoot you or something. Yeah, or you're on drugs. You're partying. Was What's that the book there? that I owned or the book that you owned? I don't think that was because I think. It was How to Survive a Horror Movie, right? The book I had was um, that Max Brooks one about how to survive a zombie outbreak or something like that. Oh, right, 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 right. Cool. It might have been that one. Anyways, the zombies, man. Weird. But like, it was super episodic, and then they kind of slowly introduced like, these other side plots that kind of like raise the stakes a little bit, so you kind of had a reason to be like, okay, I kind of want to see what happens. I yes. want to see what they're yeah. doing with this. I yeah. do still think that their standalone stories can be very, very weak. In fact, oh, I thought really a, a majority yeah. of them were weak, but yeah. then I did start liking, little by little, like her roommate, I started started winning me over, and I then like the Major doctor. won me over. Yeah, I like yeah the Ravi was like yeah. really good. And I like that he's like not a traditional, like, he's supposed to be like the dorky, like more doctor guy, but I like that he wasn't like, He's not insecure with low self esteem like your standard like nerd character and shit like this. Yeah. He like because there was like what one episode where where Liv was like he was trying to date Peyton or something his, his her best friend and she was like I don't know she's her type and he's like he like calls her out and he's like I am a doctor with a British accent he's like I can like get a girl like like I'm not worried about myself and yeah I think that's like you know breaking like a standard stereotype about that so I kind of like that he was just a strong character not just like. Like yeah, it would be like nerdy stereotype, and like he doesn't play second fiddle to live too. Yeah. Which in like a lot of like like Veronica Mars or even Buffy, it's like most of the characters were second fiddle to those like really dominant, you know. But Liv needs him just as much as like because he's her source of food. Mm-hmm. He's uh, also, working like, on like the a cure. Board for her too. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I kind of like that. Like they're and the connection kind of, to major. Yeah. Yep, they're kind of like on even even grounds there. Yeah. So yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes, and um, especially now that I wish I had looked up any character names before hitting the record <laughs> button. But Alias guy was just like, oh, the Alias dude. He's uh, Blaine he's in the now show. Blaine in the show. Yeah. So now he's doing the whole like funeral parlor yeah, thing. Yeah, which was smart. It was and, real smart. And it ended with him. He has a whole full stash of the uranium. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the uncut pure. Uncut pure. He's like, I need oh, someone. I'll get one. He was like, I need someone to 
to we're getting distracted because everyone needs beer. <laughs> Sorry. This is the sound of beer. Oh, all right. So yeah, I'm into it. Um, and he I, plays that character so well. Oh, he does. Right he's, he's so good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. So like, I'm totally into it, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what longevity this show has. Yeah, so. it's still like light. Like it's still like my junk food show. Like like the show I'll put on before I'm going to bed, or if like a Friday night when I go from work and nothing to do, mm-hmm. it's not like I need to know what happened on the next Eye Zombie, but it's like good enough, and I think a little bit different enough that I'm like. Yeah, I like putting it on. Hey, I'd rather watch iZombie than Walking Dead. Yeah, I haven't gone back at all. Boom! I haven't gone back either. I stopped. People have been saying good things, but it just wasn't as too People slow always say that, and, though. I wish we pulled the freezer trick on these. Walking Dead <laughs> is just, you know, that's a whole other thing. I don't yeah. even know if we can go there. <laughs> we might need to move on. Did, have there been any, like, new horror movies that you have seen that you liked? New? I don't know. Or ones that I would not have seen, or like a majority of people would not have seen. I don't know. Like this part, it's kind of hard to even say that because, like, especially being online, like on Instagram or yeah. whatever, it's like you get you like get into those horror communities and you kind of don't really know anymore. Like, yeah, like what? Yeah, yeah, because they talk about all the same stuff and like, wait, what's not like that popular outside of this group of people? Like, yeah, I don't know exactly. Anymore. Like the internet has made the obscure shit like not obscure at all. Yeah. So yeah, it really is hard because you can find an Instagram account or like Twitter person or yeah. blogger that has seen literally everything. Yeah, like like what ten or fifteen years ago, you go to like the vault at Ultimate Video and yeah. being all, looking at all the horror movies, and looking at the other person like nodding like yeah, like yeah. You want that? <laughs> um, well, we were talking but, yeah. even just last week about how I miss like actual video stores, like just going in there and be like, you know, I want something horror related, but I don't know what I'm gonna find. Yeah. Like, what do they have there? What's mm-hmm. actually in stock? Like, I was reading an interview with, with Quentin Tarantino and he's talking about when he used to work at the like you know a video store and just it's so funny to listen to people i wish i worked at one actually because i think it'd been so fun watching people walk in and it's like try to act so cool about going in the porn section Mm -hmm. and be like oh did i accidentally walk in here i didn't mean to but i have all my disney movies in my hand and then there's one porn (laughs) people were like so ashamed about it and it's just like to watch that like Especially if this person's like a weekly basis. <laughs> it's like, I know, man, just walk straight in there. Yeah. Like, Do you remember Video Galaxy and CMR? It was where Blockbuster used to be, and it was around when we were in like grade school. Mm-hmm. And they had along the back right wall, like pretty deep back, was the horror section. And then if you went all the way to the very corner of the horror section and then turned your head down the hallway and left was the porn door. So John and I would always try. Get we pretend <laughs> we would pretend like we were looking at the horror. We'd always just be like, uh, like peeking into the horror, the porn door. But yeah, we were definitely not old enough to be in there. I mean, I could say this now because I'm older. But if I was ever, like, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I, I would appreciate the women that could just walk in, walk in there, and be like, yeah, this is the one I want, and just walk straight out. But I would never have the confidence. And all you know, nowadays you just do everything online. <laughs> yeah, but now even now, like women in a porn store is not a big deal. Mm-mm. No. So why would it be a big deal about a porn no, section like a of a video store? No, like a or something. It's just like oh, families yeah. are kids milling are about. running around yeah. with like Twizzlers in their hands and it's like, I got like big booty bitches number three in my hands. Yeah, like don't you need neighbors you do, like, right there. Like, you do like an army roll out of the porn door and just stand up in another section. I thought it was in the Disney section. It's a horror in there. How did we get to porn? Oh, I because I you brought stores. up video stores. and I. Oh, yeah, stuff. video stores. So yeah, oh, back to the like horror, like what mm-hmm. have you seen? Yeah, it is kind of like a, I don't know, you could definitely get into like a, a showdown about like yeah. whose dick is bigger. Like what, how many horror movies yeah. have you seen? Oh, What's yeah. the most obscure? Oh, you think that's obscure? Yeah, I, yeah. That, like, I grew up on that one. Like, you know what? That's probably a fetish for people. Like, they like live for that. Yeah. And even the avenues that people like, I literally only watched The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari because mm-hmm. of the Portlandia skit. Like, that was the first time it came on my radar, and I didn't know about it before then. Uh, And it was an interesting film. Yeah. I was going to say, did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. Like, it's definitely, like, weirdly paced for a modern audience, viewer, person. Like, I think it's weird for, like, super fans of any genre to, like, be a dick about stuff like that. Like, rather than, you know, your initial reaction is to be like, well, I saw that, like, however long ago. When you should like be embracing that yeah, someone else loves something at the level think. that you love yeah. it, mm-hmm. and then rather than being a dick about like you haven't seen this, right? 
It should be more like, oh my god, you should see this. Well, now you need to see this. Yeah. If you liked that, then you need to see this yeah. too. Just kind of like so not like put it, off. Than, like yeah. yeah, don't put people off. Like keep bringing them in. Yes. Like, Agree. So, I agree. You can say that on so many subjects. Anything, too. really. Yeah. Like, anything like that. Anything you want to keep cults on. Yeah. So. I've been... Same with music or bands. People get all, like, super, like... Yeah. Like, some sort of cred because... Oh, I know. You know like, I, I knew it. them when they were at the space and there was only 15 teenagers. Hey. Like, Nick, don't give yourself up. a pat on the back. That is right? awesome. <laughs> Just hanging out with some teens. No, like, Give me some credit. No, like, it's cool to like, reminisce and be like, ah, oh, I remember when this band, whatever. But, like, if someone's coming to you and you're, you're like, having a conversation about it with, like, someone that, you yeah. know, like, you, you don't have to be a it. dick about yeah, it. Yeah, like, you know. Like, oh, you didn't know them back then? Well, well I. Like, I know that something caught starts, like, like well, I. Or well, actually. Here's, like, <laughs> here's, here's what I'll say, though. It's like eye roll. <laughs> the, one, the one thing that does piss me off, like, I'll get, I'll, I'll kind of, this is when I throw my snob card down, <laughs> because I will know an up and coming or an indie artist and I will think about a certain friend I'll be like look I know for a fact like I know mm-hmm. you're gonna love this person sent you a couple tracks on Spotify they don't listen they don't Sometimes listen people I people need to find it on their own time though. I know but that like if and then like if I tell you a hundred times and then like three four years later you're like oh I heard this song on FM radio well, then I'm like oh my god like come on know. like yeah. then I'm just like all right, well, I'm going to be a snob to you. It's like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you can't force something on someone if they're not open to it right at that moment. Is that uh, music rape? No, it's just being a snob. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. I think it depends on people react to it, though, too. Like, if it's someone that, like, doesn't react, like, the same way, not just at music recommendations, but they don't ever listen to, like, anything you've ever sent them or talked to them about. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, that get old. Then you yeah. stop sending things. Yeah, and you're just like, all right. You're just like, like, all right. Like, <laughs> you don't like fun shit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, I've been telling Maria a million times. Doom? Maria. Maria. You ever talk about Curse of Chucky? Curse of fucking Chucky is the best. It's in my queue. It's in my queue. I feel like I don't want to watch it alone. I feel like I want to watch it like when Kevin or someone else is there. I feel like it's fuck this podcast. It's over. Click. I feel like it's gonna be one of those movies you have to watch with somebody. What? Curse Curse of of Chucky. Chucky. Remember, I got the the Chucky DVD uh, last year, Uh and it was supposed to be theatrically released. Theatrically? Yeah, you did. Sure. Um, And. (laughs) I think that it went direct to video, and that is a shame for one, two, three, I don't know how many reasons, but it revives the series in, like, a very modern way. It brings Chucky back to, like, the horror days where it's, like, scary again and bloody and gory. And, like, yeah, there's a couple, like, one-liners, but it doesn't, like, hold... It, it's it's not, like... The, the humor isn't its crutch. It's not, like, the bride and the seed and all that stuff. Thinking about Chucky just reminds me of a picture I just saw online, and it's, like... It's a little kid. Like, I think it's really cool if people, like, dress their kids up as a horror or whatever. I think that's really cool. But it literally said, like, I swear to God, don't do this or I'll punt your fucking kid. I saw that, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I would, too. Like, if you make it look really like Chuggy, I will punch your kid. <laughs> don't mess with me. <laughs> that comes to my door. That thing is not getting handy. You just close the door. Yeah. <laughs> What other horror movies have you liked that we have watched recently? Oh, we watched House last night, and we were not so into it. So first of all, that movie is not a fucking horror movie. The first one, it's so weird. The tone was like all over the place. You told me there were four more, I was like... No, there's three more. They just have amazing taglines, I was just like, like, eyes bold. The marketing for that is way, way amazing. And in Scream 2, Randy Meeks... I the guy from Carrie. Nice. It is the guy from Carrie. And he curly blonde hair. I was like... Now. <laughs> but I'm, I kind of want to see number two because in Scream <laughs> 2 Randy Meek says that House 2 is one of the sequels that's better than the original just like Ghoulies Ghoulies what <laughs> if we did a whole so slow and <laughs> what if we did a whole episode yeah Ghoulies 1 sucked yeah but 2 is where it's at man 2 is where it's at dude and, everything. and then 3 is like Jumping the shark a bit, yeah. but it's fucking ghoulie, so I guess it jumped yeah, the hilarious. shark in the beginning. Yeah. But what did we just watch that you actually jumped a couple times? Oh, we are still oh. here. We're still here. No, we are still here. Oh, yeah. I was like, I know there's four words. Um, yes, but I reviewed it and I give it an A minus, and it's amazing, and it's so modern, and it puts a fresh twist on haunted house movies. And it's some jump. I like that the awesome. I like that the two leads are like older people they're like yeah. uh 50s 60s age uh and they move to like 
upper state New York, so the setting was really rural and weird. And it's exactly what you would expect mm-hmm. in the winter time. Of yeah, the lighting was really like oh. dismal. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely recommend that one. Nice. Also, I loved it. We rewatched um, the Ring, which we oh. ha- I haven't seen in years, yeah. and I actually forgot how. It is Which one did you watch? The, the first. The, no, no, no. The no, American not version. The original, American. American. Oh, the the ring. Yeah. But we, we've seen Ringu. We, yeah. Yeah, but like. When that whole, what do you call it? J horror. What's the official? Oh, just say Japanese yeah, horror. Japanese horror. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's it was just actually. I don't <laughs> I'm thinking know, of like K-pop. I'm like J horror, <laughs> K-pop. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, the ring was okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that since I saw it in the theater. Before. Yeah, that's exactly. It yeah. was really like, good, actually. Like I forgot how good it was because it eventually hit a point where the whole Japanese horror remake thing like became what? so mm-hmm. prevalent that I was just like, ah, oh, I'm enough yeah. with the Japanese horror, and I didn't mm-hmm. go back to it for a really long time. But yeah, there's some good scares. Wait, like the story's the really good. Naomi. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Naomi Watts. What was the one that Michelle Skeller did? Grudge. The Grudge. The Grudge, that's right. Which I also kind of like. Yeah, that's fucking scary. And it was I really do... slow to me, I felt. It was like, slow, yeah. but the noise in itself, I couldn't unhear right. that. The noise, uh, ready? It's like, yeah. it's like... Yeah. yeah, that's scary. Like, you can't unhear that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how slow this fucking movie is, yeah. I'm getting scared. And I'm this constantly. I like The Grudge. The Grudge 2 is god-awful. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Uh, the Grudge 2 has got awful, and The Ring 2 is not so hot either, but I kind of want to rewatch it now just because I'm like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. I forgot. I've been really vibing on, um, like, 80s, taking it back to, like, the 80s recently. Dude, hell yeah. Like, like the stuff. I so, haven't seen oh, it. It's I so good. Not seen. The stuff. How have you not seen yeah. the stuff? <laughs> Tell it's, me about it. It's really fun. So, like, there's oh, this, just like, about. um... Like, food that everyone loves. It's, like, super delicious, but it kills you. And it's the stuff. And nice. it's, like... Yeah, it's got this awesome, like, super uh, cheesy logo. And it's just, like, this white cream kind of... Cream kind of cool, cool whoopy substance. But, yeah, it's it's really it's just awesome. a lot of fun. And it, it's, like, ends up being really good. Is that instant or you have to go? I think it's actually streaming. I think it is streaming. Yeah. And I keep confusing that one with uh, Chud, the C-H-U-D Those movie. Those are so different. Are they? I... A coworker told me about them, and he's like, "Oh, have you seen the stuff or Chud?" And I'm like, oh, "The stuff is Chud? like a white coolipy dessert killing thing, and then Chud is like some fucking like creature." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So I'll watch the stuff. I'm into that. I like stuff. I like stuff. Yeah, it's sometimes. Fun. It's a good one. So you like stuff? <laughs> um, a little. <laughs> You gotta take it to the sci-fi part and just watch Maximum Overdrive already. Oh, Max. Okay. It's um, fun. It's, I should. It's ridiculous. It's a little slow, but it's it's got like young Emilio. <sighs> Sold. Oh, so wow. like and like totally like more like the Repo Man Emilio, yeah. not like the Brat Pack Emilio. Yeah. So appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. The premise is just ridiculous. So. I am frequently overwhelmed about the list of things that I need to watch, <laughs> and maybe it's because I like too many types yeah. of things. And I'm just open to, like, the whole gamut. Because, mm-hmm. like, you think of the normal person, like, they usually like the Oscar fair or, like, uh, good dramas. Or, like, oh, I only watch comedies. Or, like, I mostly yeah, watch some comedies. Some people just, like, like, aren't into movies or aren't into music. Yeah. You know, so. Or, Which is crazy. I don't get it. I don't care really I don't, that, but. How do I even talk to you? And I don't, <laughs> I don't watch sports. If you don't eat food or watch TV or listen to music, I got nothing. To talk and if to you put about. sometimes Emily and her brother and myself, we have full conversations and movie quotes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people try to listen to us. Like I remember one time we were in South Carolina, <laughs> people are just like, "What are you guys even saying they right know. now?" She like, like doesn't watch enough movies to understand and, anything. Yeah. And we're Brooke saying, doesn't but either. We just kept. Like, well, I mean that's like not for everybody other. too because some people are into movies but may not watch them enough on repeat. Like Kevin won't watch a movie so over and over again. Like <laughs> no, like I do that too. I'll rewatch a movie if I go across a channel and it's a movie I know that I really like. If it's in the middle of the movie, I don't I'll care. I'll watch stuff, the yeah. rest of it. And like Kevin can't do that. He's just like ah, I can't really. It's, it's not my thing. And like depends on if I so. own it or not, and I haven't seen it in a while. If I own it and I haven't seen it in a while, I will not start from the middle because I'll be like, I should rewatch that. Now I'll still watch it. And he's always like, <laughs> we have the DVD I'm, I'm it's right that. there. Like <laughs> I, if if we own the DVD, I don't want to start something in the middle. I'd if rather I have like seen the it full. In a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it's something I know really well, like oh, the Breakfast Club's on, like whatever. Well, that's what I mean. Like that. yeah. Yeah, but if and it's something know. I hadn't seen and like. 
literally years. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah, no, I'd then probably I don't be like that. Would make it. remind me, like, oh, I gotta watch that again. Yeah. But like a Nightmare for Christmas, or like it's, any of like the, Tom, the Chris Farley movies. Can we talk about yeah. a Nightmare Before Christmas for a hot second? Because it's gonna I turn was into arguing. a long debate if this is a Christmas movie or Halloween movie. No, it's not. I won't go time. there. I won't <laughs> go. The There's no time. <laughs> no, the guy who made it already said it's a it's a Halloween. Movie. He did no, but that's not what I want to talk about. Okay. My <laughs> argument about that movie, it's fucking genius, and uh, one of the very most important qualities of it is like the visuals are so epically awesome but the music is of equal awesomeness and like the two combined make it a really unique thing but i would argue that the climax of the film is not strong enough and i always taper off at the end like sure jack learns his lesson and sure he gets shot out of the sky but i feel like the last half of the movie, no, even the last third of the movie is not as strong as the totally two thirds before. Out on the couch. I do pass out <laughs> usually towards the end because usually it's like our nightcap movie and uh, we've eaten. That may be more why. <laughs> no, no, but I will. I I stand by it. I. I don't. Argue the opposite. I don't agree. I'll respect your opinion, but I don't agree. Because he's like, you know, there's that whole shit up in the sky and he shot down. And, he's at the graveyard yeah. and that's where he learns. And, and then, then he, goes, he sings a sad the song. But then he goes back down to Oogie Boogie yeah. and it's a little bit more lively and it's like <laughs> another fight out. Yeah. So that's really fun and cool. So I don't think you really think it tapers out. I, think I well. literally think I fall asleep at the same part every single time. He does. He does. <laughs> but we watch it. All right. Well, maybe it's because we watch this movie like after midnight. So you, you every, already know too. And yeah. it's after midnight. You probably had a couple drinks I, or a couple hits or something. I don't know. I still, I still think. I watch it to the end every time. And then the next day he's like, do you want to watch Nightmare? I'm like, motherfucker. I watched that last <laughs> night. <laughs> It's so weird that I was awake for the whole thing. Yeah. Yo, not hate, watch it. haters gonna haters gonna hate. <laughs> but no matter how many times we watch, I love when I find something new. I could say that about mm-hmm. everything. And so we were driving, uh, and we were listening to the Ghostbusters theme song, and we finally heard a lyric that like we've never heard before. Oh, is that what you posted on Facebook? That's yeah, what I posted. Out of it? nowhere, it's like. Bustin makes me feel good. And, and like, like, I heard it in a different way. And I was just like, I can never unhear that now. It's like, I've never actually heard Bustin that. Bustin makes me feel good. Yeah, well, yeah. It's the end like, of the song when he's just kind of like ad-libbing out. And he's just like, Bustin makes me feel I'm like, wow. Listen I've for it, people. Listen, listen for, for it. it. <laughs> Things that you learn. Years later. I don't know if that makes us really awesome or, like, really immature. <laughs> immature is not the word. Sad might be. <laughs> <laughs> we're not immature. We're just really pathetic. <laughs> it's not weird either. I'm not in this boat with you. Are you guys feeling the new Ghostbusters? Do you think it's going to be good? Do you have expectations for it? I don't do expectations for... Like sequels and yeah. things like, like that. Like I'm just I'm not going into it with any opinion whatsoever. I'm not even yeah. trying to like mentally tie it to no, the franchise exactly. or like I'm not the either. Movies, movies. Yeah. I'm just happy it's like coming. Like I'm ha- yeah. like it's gonna happen and like I feel like That's I would have been happy said. with a That's female ensemble said. cast for a comedy like that, no matter what the topic yeah. was, really. I yeah. think it's just cool that we're gonna have like more movies like that. Um yeah, which is, you know, after the whole Bridesmaids thing, like, everyone was like, oh my god, women, like, going to the movies. Like, yeah, well, duh, like, you're just not making, movie, like, a lot yeah. of movies like that. Yeah. You know? I I always liked... I think Melissa McCarthy is in a good spot right now. Um, I, dude, what did she just have? Tammy? And Spy. And Spy. And Spy was amazing. Um, oh, you guys saw it? I didn't see it. I yeah. did see it. Tammy was good too. I need to see Susan Spy Sarandon. again. Yeah. Love Susan Sarandon. Tammy That's... had good moments, but it's not as good as Spy. I opinion. saw the heat with her and Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I love oh, the heat. It was cute. Great. I it love was too heat. slow. It took too long for it to like you really. You and everything get... is slow. Well, no, I felt like, you know, a comedy should be. Like, there shouldn't be, like, so much of, like, a build-up. It's, like, don't even get... Yo, don't yeah, even get me started. That's Melissa McCarthy's, like, they, they they really do, like, they over... They draw things out, kind of, like, Because she has good style. chemistry with yeah. Sandra Bullock. So, I know the like, problem, you guys. It's a two-hour motherfucking comedy. That's really? what it is. I've been arguing Back this for my dumber. entire life. <laughs> he, dumb and Dumber, if it was 15 to 20 minutes long. shorter... Wait, the it would first be, one? Yeah. Get cut yeah. 15 minutes. No, that's solid. Cut really 15 minutes. It. I mean, you probably could. It'd still be a strong movie. It, but I don't make feel it like, tighter. It's not too No, long. I feel like that movie starts, like, right away, boom. Yeah. You know Jim Carrey's character. You know you how know, fucking weird he is. Yeah. You know Jeff Daniels. Yeah. But in the beginning of The Heat, it was like, 
too much of like Sandra Bullock oh, doing stupid office cop. stuff yeah. and like <laughs> Mills McCarthy over here doing her cop thing. Like, yeah. I don't know, it didn't really kick each yeah. other off. Like, it didn't kick off that relationship, which really drove the movie, I felt so. Yeah, no, he always okay. brings up dumb dumb. He thinks that if a comedy is two hours, it's too long. And I'm like, that's Some are. So, some, some are. But not yeah. Dumb and Dumber. You do not. Like, you probably could still cut Dumb and Dumber and it would still be a strong film, but I, I feel like it didn't every hurt. Minute. Yeah, like, I felt like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even in that movie, I think a lot of comedies suffer from running a little too long. Like, uh, the other guys with uh, Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. I, can see that. I don't think it's as yeah. good of a movie as Dumb and Dumber. It's obviously not like classic like that, but if you trim that down a little bit, it would be tighter and move yeah, quicker. Yeah, they had a lot of good jokes in there. They there had a were, good, good chemistry. Oh, oh Michael yeah. Keaton was on fire yeah, in that movie, yeah. too. So, yeah. so I can definitely see that being way better, a little bit shorter. Yeah. Even horror movies, I think I'm yeah. really looking for that 90 to uh, hour 45 mm-hmm. Sweet spot. I mean, maybe well, that's I just me. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, like you said, like, it really is about the pace, too. Yeah. Like, if a horror movie is, like, if people don't start dying until the last 20 minutes, like, this movie sucks. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> worth it anymore. It's kind of like, 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 like oh, I was invested man. in it. I'm just like, eh. Like, I don't need to know this person's, like, grandmother <laughs> and his birthday. Like, just kill him. It's, like, 90 <laughs> minutes of, like, fake scares. Oh, the oh. cat jumped off the yeah, counter. No. The window slammed. Oh, Jesus, yeah. like, <laughs> I hate that shit. Okay, like and what, the thing, was, okay, it's fine. But like, if that's all you're banking on for like the first hour, third of your like yeah. three quarters of your movie, it's like yeah. no. And that's why jump scares get a bad rap because like if they're used too much in the method, like in the way that you just said, then they're awful, it's and cheap. the movie is probably yeah. shit. And we are still here. I jumped a bunch of times, but it was for like actual good scares or like mm-hmm. cool things they did visually yeah. where like she didn't even see this one thing mm-hmm. that I jumped at because it was yeah. so like well done, like background I foreground. I didn't rewind it. I was like, what did you focus on? Like, what yeah. did you see? And I had to. And I was like, oh man, it like freaked it. me out. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you were looking at it obviously when it happened, but I was looking at something else on the screen. It was that subtle, but yeah. that scary. But yeah, I didn't jump, but I could get why you did it was a good movie mm-hmm. I still was yelling at them the whole time like get out of the house <laughs> like why are you still there <laughs> Yeah, like there's always there's always that like get the fuck out moment in horror movies that the characters never get like pick they up on. That I was actually I was watching a movie with my mom last they night. They didn't even I'm run chiller. upstairs. They just stood there while the fucking like ghost was just standing in front of him. It's like you gonna do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> Gage just stand there. Yeah, and she's like, why don't they just do this thing? I'm like, because then the movie would be over. <laughs> <laughs> there's no premise. It's done. Yeah, and part it's of the so reason true. like. Scream 1 is an amazing movie for reasons that everybody knows, but even having this particular conversation, when Jamie Kennedy's character is like on the couch and Ghostface is behind him, and he's talking to Halloween on the screen, like, Jamie, like, yeah, like, you know, and like, that movie is just perfection, I thought. Just gotta talk about Scream 1 all day. We but like, that's not there. really the same thing we were just talking about, because he doesn't know that's behind him, so it's not like he's doing something stupid. No, but they're being like... Oh, they're that, recognizing yeah. the fact yeah, that not, like, like instead of stop watching when they you're just watching go run up the stairs yeah. and go get them or something <laughs> like when you're watching movies you're just like yeah. why are you still in there just yeah. run away <laughs> and in the movie he's doing that but with Ghostface lurking right behind him and it's just fucking genius yeah we know what your favorite franchise is yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> and it is a shame that Scream 3 sucks so bad because like if 3 didn't suck so bad it would be like, sure, the films are like in varying degrees of excellence, but three really is just like, if there's like one of those like wavy curves, it's just like a total drop right mm. there. <sighs> Scott Foley ruined it. <sighs> we watched Troll. <laughs> no, we didn't watch Troll. No, okay, Leprechaun, and that's watch. what brought up Troll, so uh, I was like, we should watch Troll. I used to watch the, the, that Troll that everyone made fun of, and like the. We, me and my brother used to watch that when we were kids. Yeah. And we thought it was like a legit good movie. Oh yeah. And yeah, then yeah. I that's saw. That's how I thought about Leprechaun. Wait, too. Troll Two. Troll Two. That's what I'm talking oh, yeah. about, actually. Yeah. That's what she thought that's about what Leprechaun. Okay. About so then what's Leprechaun. Troll? Is it, like, how was that movie? Like when you guys watched it, um, what was that like? I think. You mean? No, we watched Leprechaun. We didn't um, watch Troll. We were I, getting I said confused because we watched Leprechaun Origins. I watch troll. Let's put that on. <laughs> we watched Leprechaun Origins, which we thought was going to be uh, similar to Leprechaun in tone. It was completely oh, different. Yeah, yeah. We told you yeah. about that. Um, and we talked about watching Troll 2 again, but no. we didn't. Yeah. Yet. I kind of want to. But yeah, I agree. I watched... Did Star you think Troll, it was scary as a kid, Troll 2? Um, a little bit, but it was just more like... we didn't. It wasn't like a bad movie to us. Right. And then when I 
we had all the, like that documentary about it and everything and then you like I hadn't seen it since I was probably like nine and then I was like this oh, really is a bad movie oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this is not hold up yeah. when Jennifer Aniston doesn't want to admit she was in Leprechaun then you realize oh was it that bad <laughs> See, I don't think that, like... Is that not on your IMDb page? I don't think A-listers Renee. should shun. <laughs> <laughs> so mad, Renee Estevez has now put, what, like, Night Shift slash Intruder, whatever it's called, on her website. That's, like, three different names. First of all, I think Intruder got a Blu-ray. Uh, I think that Scream Factory is releasing it or nice. did release it. I should look that up. But I didn't hate... I loved Intruder. That was great. Also, that ending was great. I have a really soft spot for slasher movies. No, like, but... I, th- I think that uh, it was easy to recognize, like to like get into it and still recognize the the impact it could be on someone that ended up making slasher movies like after that movie, mm-hmm. where like I felt like Black Christmas, I didn't really get into that as much because I feel like I've been watching movies that were influenced by that for so long right. that Black Christmas seemed like boring to me. Almost. I agree with that, and I didn't fully appreciate the original Black Christmas until I revisited revisited it like. Five seven years after I originally saw yeah, it, like I get it, like I get yeah, it. and it's, it's super place in the genre. It, it's but, super dark, yeah, and very excellent. But I don't have like an attachment to it, you know. Like I'm not gonna go buy it on Blu-ray. Or, Agreed. Yeah. I would agree with that too. Yeah. What was that movie we watched? Um, that it's Zoe's friend who directed and wrote it. Oh, Starry Eyes. Starry Eyes, like that was really original, and that <laughs> I mean, it was one of those creepy scares where it's mm-hmm. just like man I mean most of this is really real for some people and mm-hmm. then, but it also had that guy from uh, Flight of Concords in it he was the manager at the restaurant oh he's not from Flight of the Concords Pat Healy he's from that movie Cheap Trip Cheap and drink alright Cheap Thrills Pat Healy Oh, I didn't get to watch that. Was that good? Cheap Thrills? Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge... Right, yeah, right, yeah. It was okay. Mm-hmm. I had mixed feelings about it, though. Like, I don't even... Oh. I couldn't even really... No babies. Okay, well, we're recording here. <laughs> Sorry about that. There will be no babies on this podcast. <laughs> Gotta go do that. <laughs> um, you know, I don't even... I can't even tell you why I didn't like it. It just... The tone was kind of weird. It was really messed up, but it kind of like just rubbed me the wrong way for some reason. I think she felt the same. Uh, but then we went to see Starry Eyes. We knew Pat Healy. Obviously, he's nice. done a million things, mm-hmm. and we like did some homework after that about him. So I wanted to see Cheap Thrills because I like everyone that was involved with it. Um, I mean well, Ethan Embry. I mean yeah, fair enough for life. Did yeah. you see he was on At Midnight? Some of the things he was saying was kind of corny, but I was like, I will always like be a fan. I'm I sorry. didn't see him on At Midnight. <laughs> he follows me on Twitter though. I uh, still. I never deleted that. Where I started following my Twitter, then it's like Ethan Embry is following Embry Ethan or whatever is following you. I still keep that in my Gmail folder under like social media folder or whatever. I will not delete it. Yeah, I, I can't hear the name or see the name or anything about Elijah Wood and not think of you. Didn't you write him a letter? No, that was Edward Furlong. Furlong. In fourth grade, I wrote, which is so bad. I wrote Edward Furlong a letter, and I put a puffy pumpkin sticker on the back. Edward Funny Furlong. Stickers. <laughs> I was finding on Netflix a little bit as I do, and a Night of the Demons remake with Shannon Elizabeth and Edward Furlong. Like, what? first of all, I didn't even know that ha- that that movie had a remake. Yeah. Second of all, the two of them together. Like, there was a time when Edward Furlong Someone was kind of like a decent like. Well, it was from two thousand nine. The last so, movie I saw him in was, was it Packer? Is that the movie where he's like the photographer? That was the last movie. She I just walks off set. It. She just takes off. <laughs> We're recording here. She's like, man, I'm going to go down the hall. Edit it out. <laughs> but there was a movie that made me the Truth Thrills makes me think of when I saw it. I was like, this seems like the premise of Truth Thrills. I can't remember the actor's name in it right now. You've seen it in a bunch of stuff. Um, but it's kind of like a similar premise. I think it's like 13 Steps? 13 Ghosts? something? No, it's not that Oh, movie. it's not horror? <laughs> no, it's like more suspense. Like... <laughs> um, where it's kind of like cheap thrills, where he has to keep doing something like the, like the, a crazy thing, and then it keeps getting crazier and crazier, and he keeps getting more money every level he gets up to it. Ron Perlman's in it. It's actually pretty good. It was like a random find on Netflix, and it ended up being actually pretty interesting. I, I showed you the IMD page one day on GChat. No, that is that sounds exactly like cheap thrills. Yeah, it's like almost the same premise, but it's a different. Oh, and what's her face from True Blood is in it? Tara, the actress. I can't remember her real name. Oh, Rutina. Yes. 
So what if I I'm, I'm typing? In Rutina, is it Wesley? Weasley? Wesley. Yeah. Rutina Wesley Weasley. Yeah. And Rod, thirteen sins. There you go. That's it. Okay. It's actually surprisingly good. Yeah. I could get into that. Yeah. So that was that was pretty good. And when I was watching, this sounds like cheap thrills. <laughs> uh, did you see Starry Eyes though? No. I you should it. see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I got to interview Kevin Kolsch, and he was really cool. I did really read that cool. interview, I read that. And um, I just love, I love the tone of the movie. The music is grand slam out of the park. Yeah, one of those labels did the nice vinyl release yep, of that. Waxwork yeah, Waxwork did. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's, it is a little slower in the beginning, but it has a really nice build, and the climax is just one of those, like, completely mm-hmm. worth it. It's a movie that has a tone and a story and a vibe like unlike anything else I'd seen. So it, was, it felt really fresh. Yeah. I feel like whenever you can find a horror movie that's that fresh, it's worth yeah. noting. It's totally notable. Yeah, like I'm not opposed to like a slow movie. Like I appreciate long films. I appreciate like a slow build up or something that's understated. But your ending has to count. Yeah, it, it has, has to, to like be, be cohesive. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to feel like it's wasted. Like I, I've suffered through two hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I'm looking at this agenda here, um, and <laughs> I do want to talk about Ready Player One. Even though we've been talking about horror this whole time, we're recording this on the 25th of October, so I don't know if this will be up before Halloween, but uh, to take a sharp right-hand turn, because I've been reading about Steven Spielberg like doing the movie and how he's not going to be referencing any of his original films in the movie, even though the book is very heavily mm-hmm. involved in his work for... So many reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how do you do? You think that will largely affect the film? I mean, he doesn't want to reference even by name. Like I can see if he doesn't want to dwell on it or like showcase it. But and yeah. I think that no, I, I I think he's just completely cutting his stuff out. Interesting. I think that might be. I'll, I'm curious to see how they adapt it. Um, but there are so many references in that book to pop culture past that, yeah, like, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's maybe so, it won't be missed. Or, yeah, like maybe they reference other things, like the other video games and other films and books and things. So maybe it won't be missed. But I feel like they have to at least keep true to that pop culture reference because that's such yeah. an integral part of who that character oh, is they will. and like the universe with the, with you know. With the and even lives. the war games, like yeah. recreating the war games movie, and yeah. then what was the last movie they recreated? The th- after the third gate, it was. Damn it. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think that... And then we were going to talk about casting the film. Yeah. And I found out, like, not only did you say uh, off this podcast that you didn't know that many, like, 18, 19, 20-year-old yeah. actors, but then I just kept thinking about actors and shit I watched yesterday. And I was like, <laughs> oh, what about, what about uh, you know, iZombie Chick, uh, Rose McIver <laughs> for... Uh, Artemis. Yeah. And I'm just like, wait, but now I'm just like thinking about what I watched like a day ago and that's, that's not really fair. That's nothing wrong. That's not wrong. I mean, that's nothing wrong with like that. you could give her brunette hair and she yeah. could totally play 20. Like, yeah, she's going to want to get roles, right? Yeah. I mean, she, she's out there working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I couldn't think of anyone else for, uh, and then I thought about um, Gabourey Sidibe. And I was like, oh, but that's so like stereotypical. Like, oh, that's the one person <laughs> yeah. I go to. It's like, for do that. they want to do like something more fresh face, like some more unknowns or something? See, I could see them picking a fresh face yeah. for Wade. I could see that totally being. I a think new so up-and-comer. too, especially again. And because... Spielberg would do that shit. And too. he knows, and like whoever casting people he works with, they're pretty good. Yeah. Obviously, like I don't think I, I haven't ever watched something where I'm like, oh, this was miscast. But especially in a Spielberg movie, yeah. all movies. But also because like, um. I turn the lights on. We have delivery people coming. So. <laughs> the food is not here yet, people. Damn it. But I turn the lights on and just realized they're going to die. They're going to trip and fall. Okay, That's back to idea. you guys. But like, you need someone new, especially because Wade does like a transformation in the book. Yeah. So it's like if you have someone that's like, I was going to say Zach Efron just because I just watched Neighbors and he's a okay. young person, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, like, he's in, never mind, Jonas Brothers. He's in Hotel. Okay. So that's another young young actor. No, what's you, he in? Yeah, they're, no, Scream Queens. There we go. Yeah. Scream Thanks. Queens. So he's another, yeah. like, him, for example, too, Nick Jonas, whatever. Like, okay. he's already, like, a super fit young guy. Wade starts off as, right. like, a chubby, like, nerdy computer kid who, like, works out into someone that's super fit. Mm-hmm. Who would look at Nick Jonas and, like, with a little extra weight on him and, and believe it? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to be, like... But then, do they 
cast someone like a Nick Jonas or whoever's popular at the moment, and, and keep and, no, no, just keep I them think... fit and like n- just like not have the whole weight as kind of like an overweight kid in the beginning. Just like skip that whole part of it. Like, what do you think that like I don't know. Like, this is what it's, and an unknown person can like start off like chubby and then like morph into the yeah. version, or they can just like skip it entirely and just cast someone who's traditionally like handsome. The more I think about it, I think that it should either be an unknown or. If you look, take the Hunger Games, for example, like before Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence was getting accolades for Winter's Bone, but not everyone had seen Winter's Bone and she wasn't a household name at that point. So you get someone that you know has the chops, has an indie or two under their belt, and you know is going to like nail it like mm-hmm. Jennifer as Katniss, you know, like someone right on the bubble there, Yeah, um, which I think would be cool. And I, I don't know, like I hope, I know this movie is going to be basically like all CGI, but It'll be interesting to see what direction the CGI kind of mm-hmm. goes in. Like, is it going to look suit? Like, is it going to look like you're playing PlayStation, yeah. or is it going to have a little bit more realism in the Oasis system? I think there should be like a separation because the world in which he lives is like they describe it as being like being so dark and dirty, and like it being like a totally different universe when they're actually in the Oasis like system. So I hope that it's like you feel that separation. You feel like why people would kind of just be immersed in that and yeah. you, you know what I mean so like yeah. the reason that's a, a huge part of the, yeah. the narrative there so yeah well I enjoyed the hell out of that book and uh, I think the movie's gonna be great Emily is gonna start the book yeah so fast read just like the con kind of was M stack who are you <laughs> <laughs> have you been watching Scream Queens we just briefly no, touched upon that no it's in my queue uh, we haven't we haven't done it okay. yet. Yeah, that was me trying to do a poor excuse of another example. I was like, you know, Nick Jonas, but I had to like elaborate yeah, yeah, yeah. and make you help me out to do an actual example. <laughs> I think I like Scream Queens. Uh, obviously, if you haven't talked about uh, seen it, we don't have to talk about it too much. But uh, I feel like it was really strong the first couple episodes. It's is it tapering? Kind of tapering a little bit. I just don't know how they can do a, a, each season, like twenty twenty two episodes. If it was on Showtime or FX, like it might make sense to mm-hmm. do like thirteen episode seasons. I think it's gonna really run itself dry if they yeah. go for twenty. I'm not sure how much they were greenlit for, but and that just makes me think of that whole like British TV versus American TV. Like, yeah, like it's okay to do like a short, shorter episode set, but when you are in the business of advertising, being like where you make your money, then you need as many episodes as possible to yep. get your advertisers to pay. So. That's like an interesting, interesting mix too. Like, where what would be the platform? <laughs> you mind got it. For a shorter series. <laughs> yeah. You want to invite the delivery man? <laughs> I think the delivery guy might have some important insight to add here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm liking it, but I, I I'm fully like I'm enjoying it in the moment under the guise of this is gonna dive bomb. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of expecting myself to fall out of it, like, which is yeah. fine. Yeah. And I, I wanted to watch, try watching it because of Jamie Lee Curtis. And yeah. she is great. That's awesome. She's everything you want her to be. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad she got her role. <laughs> and it lo- like, I'm kind of like over Emma Roberts doing her Emma Roberts thing because she yeah. plays the like strong, mm-hmm. hot, bitchy chick in yeah. Scream 4 and then in Horror Story and now mm-hmm. in Scream Queens. It's nothing new from her. Yeah. Uh, she has rapid fire lines of dialogue. That are pretty impressive, mm-hmm. and she has like really nice like tennis match back and forth dialogue with yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis, which is really strong. Like she has, obviously has chops and stuff, yeah. but I actually just watched her in this like okay movie, um, Adult World. It's her and what's the fuck is it? The guy from excuse me, I forgot to edit the profanity out. Um, oh, I, I said the f word like a hundred right. times. <laughs> I but um, it's okay. Is it Chris Evan Peters? Evan Evan Peters. Okay, yes, yeah. I. Can never remember his name. I don't know why. But yeah. I think he's great. He's awesome. I yeah. get the Chris um, part though, because isn't there a guy? There's that Chris Evans, had... who's Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> like... But then there's that other guy that had three names, like growing up, like a '90s guy with blonde hair, and he was also a Chris, like Evans or something. I'll look that up and get back here. <laughs> cool. But um, it was Emma Roberts as the main character, and she's like this insufferable, like, like, college graduate, like poet or what, whatnot. And the whole movie, I kind of, like, hate her the entire time. She's good at that. Yeah, so, like, kudos to her for really owning yeah, that. Yeah, she's extremely yeah. good Yeah, and that. then, like, John Cusack is in it, and Evan Peters is in it, and they, like, call her out. So, like, in the way the movie overall was just, like, okay, but I found myself thinking about it, and I was, like, it's actually kind of good. And, That's like, the, be able to, yeah, and, like, be able to call, like, her That's out for being, test. like, 
like ignorant in the way the world is and like so it's like I hate you Emma Roberts you're really irritating <laughs> but, but, but like the movie gets it the movie it. gets it and they called yeah. you out and I was like that's the only reason I like this movie because everyone called you out on your dude bullshit. what's <laughs> what's better than like watching a movie and like being like alright like I think I liked it and then like waking oh, up the next yeah. morning and being like oh, but what about this and this and this? And, like, yeah. still thinking about it? Yeah. And, yeah, I know you always, I I always that says that. I do that all the time. So I just and then that, you're like, damn, I love like that the movie. Day, like, while we're watching it afterwards, I'm like, yeah, I know, I liked it. He's always like, well, you know, did you like it? How was it? And I was like, I, I liked it. And then the next day, if I'm still thinking about you're it, it's like, like ah. I really liked it. <laughs> yeah. And I would recommend it. But sometimes it takes, like, an overnighter for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. I did that with this. It's not correlated. It's totally, like, romantic and, like, cheesy. But I did that with the movie Copenhagen. Okay. And, and you tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, they did an amazing job of building up the tension, and you feel so awkward, too. Because it's like a romance between, like, this 15-year-old girl and, like, this 30-something-year-old guy. Yeah. And the whole time, you're kind of like, you get swept up in the tension of the relationship, because they do a really good job of, like, kind of building that up, and you're kind of like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then, but then you're like, she's fucking 15 or 14 or whatever, <laughs> and you're like, I feel so gross and weird, this is not right, I can't watch this, and... So, it seems like the premise itself seems super basic, like it's been a million times, but the fact that the two characters have the age difference and the way they did it, like, I kept thinking about the movie for days, and I had to watch it again. I was like, I'm watching this again. <laughs> and the soundtrack is really good, too. So, helps. So yeah. many movies. I want to watch both of those. So many. So you have to start with the stuff. <laughs> okay, so the stuff in Copenhagen. And so what a genre jump! You're gonna watch an '80s like blocky horror movie, and you're gonna and jump to like a psycho. Well, <laughs> this whole podcast has been like back and forth. That's all over. true. But, hey, that's, true. Like, hey, that's what we're doing. Because you sneaked up on us, you're like, oh, by the way, we're recording. By the way, I it's slipped organic. it in your back door. Yeah, <laughs> just in the first time today. You slipped in my back door just earlier. Wow, a lot of back door. So, all right, we're at the 51 mark now. I would like to end uh our original concept was to have a bunch of different segments that would like pop up week to week or like you know every other episode like (laughs) you know like similar so whatever that makes sense in my head never supposed to be here (laughs) but we've been talking about discussing something called important matters and we originally wanted to do this podcast a full year ago our original email was january of 2014 and the, one of the first ideas we had was, do you think that Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age wears pajamas to bed? And if not, what does he wear to bed? I don't know. He, he, he sleeps naked. I can see that. I can maybe see I can see like a boxer. I can see only. a boxer. I can see a boxer too. But I can also see like the classy, like cool Josh Homme. Or is it Hami? I don't know what's the Hami. I believe it's Hami. Okay. Yeah. We've so, had so many, yeah. Because sometimes you see him in a picture, like when he's not on stage doing the, like the back comb, comb his hair, like rock oh, out thing. Yeah, yeah. So slick. Yeah, or he's out in like so you Paris. You see something from the 50s where he's holding like cognac <laughs> in his hand and it's like. But it's like rock and roll, so he's greedy, so he's not going to like be super fancy. I just picture that he just but then, like, naked. Yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah, I think naked or maybe on special occasions he has like a nice set. Don't you don't need a lot of. <laughs> you don't need a lot of clothing set. in LA. <laughs> So he doesn't need clothing for warmth, so that's a factor. You know, and when you're touring, you don't want to carry too much shit on you, so yeah. you just strip down. Oh, well, when I was thinking of this scenario, though, I didn't think on tour. I was, like, at home yeah. with his family. Yeah. Well, he definitely has a nice lacy set. <laughs> it's like a, a satin <laughs> cotton, like, or a satin kind of set, like, in the sure. TLC creep video, you know. Yeah. Like. Now, is, <laughs> <laughs> now, is he boxers or briefs? This but is weird for time, a straight like, guy to bring to the parents. table. <laughs> In the winter time, it's like flannel, like the Home Alone parents Ooh. when they wake up and they're like, "What's that?" Like I could see him something like that. No shirt though. I could maybe naked. see him. <laughs> I could maybe see him rocking that in like ten years. Well, right now he's naked. It'll be his neck. <laughs> you guys just want him to be naked. I mean, I'm okay with it. Like, like, I think he's naked. Like, he has to be. I mean. Hey, and sexy naked. No, nothing wrong with it. He must have really nice sheets, though. I do. That thread, ha- that thread sheets count Sheets are important. Like, so she bought these important. silk sheets mm-hmm. that in the summertime are just, Perfect. like, lovely. And, then, and in the wintertime, <laughs> she got flannel flammable. sheets. No, I think your mom actually gave us They're a like sort of them, yeah. And you bought a pair. And, like... The sheets are They're important. Just, yeah. the sheets I don't are buy into that fucking like nine million thread count Egyptian shit though. You spend like a third of your life in your bed, so I mean. Yeah, I mean, sure. A yeah. third of your life. <laughs> you think about it, right? When I live with my parents, all I do. I mean, it's is great. Sleep it's and, also like, like everything yeah. on my 
bed in my bedroom. I never left my bedroom. So it's like, <laughs> sheets are like everything, right? Yeah. Or like, oh, I found a really good jersey, like, cotton, like, t-shirt oh, kind yeah. of material. <sighs> Talk so about material, material man. <laughs> so <Texas>. we have... <laughs> So we have Japanese food waiting for us. Maybe we should sign this off. I think we should say where we should be found on in the interweb because I have a blog and I want to be self-promoting like an asshole. I'm just going to say I didn't so, know I was a part of this. <laughs> She's like, I'm in Connecticut. You were kidnapped into this thing. You were just like sitting there and I was like, oh, I hit record. And just sit by yeah. Sandra. So, you may never hear from us again. So I am at Littlest Winslow on Twitter and I am at Littlest Winslow blog on Instagram. And Maria... Oh, I guess I do Instagram the most. Yeah. I don't know. Social media is exhausting. But um, what is my handle? Is that at Boogans? No, at Doom Boogans. Doom Boogans. A, a Boogans slipped by, slipped by the podcast this week. We might have to circle back to the Boogans. Yeah. We might. Emily does uh, not want to be found. I don't exist. Emily does not want you to find her. She's off the grid. All right. So I think I think we're signing off. And we will see you next time, which hopefully will be sooner than a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe not January 2016. <laughs> yeah, sooner 2017. than like 2017. <laughs> yeah. Good talk, guys.